Hey, everybody. Welcome back in Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I am Rob Ellis along with Derek Gunn. Barrett joins us once again. What's up, B. Brooks? How we doing? Everything's good, man. Everything good. Yeah. They um they uh, assured us that um that uh Lane is is cleared protocol. Yep. Good sign. And then uh uh at this point, you know, Quinn is practicing today. Yes, very good, very good. All right, joining us, our next guest. He played oh man, what what a run. What a run. 14 years in the NFL. Chuck, Chuck. Between, between Detroit on? and Pittsburgh. And he had to deal with Barrett Brooks as a teammate, which is probably his greatest accomplishment, maybe, <laughs> maybe in life. Uh, and Derek, you are you are muted. But Charlie Badge, Charlie, welcome to the show, man. First of all, great to have you on. And I, I gotta I, we need the dirt, Charlie. Derek and I need the dirt. On we need Barrett. the dirt. We, we, we need stories, we, man. Oh. We need stuff that we can use. Okay, wait, wait. material. Char We're Charlie, 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 I have stories as well. I've dealt with this man for too many years, but <laughs> You know something that we don't know. We need that information. <laughs> no, it's all good. I appreciate you all having me on, fellas. It's a pleasure. But I do have one small correction. You said 14 years. It was 15 years. So I oh, don't, want, oh. don't want to sell myself short on that one extra year. That's <laughs> that, year. <laughs> yes, that, that is like five times more than the, the usual life of an NFL player. So you deserve every year of those props, okay. Charlie. My it, bad on all, that. Hey, it's all good, man. It's all the yeah. fun. It's all the love. But Literally got to the point, man, I've known Barrett a long time. We go back to almost over 20 years now, man. And man, yeah. I appreciate his friendship and the brotherhood that he's meant for me over the years. I love him and his family. But man, this is a guy, man, he was very competitive, man, when he got up to uh, Detroit. And it was funny because all this dude kept talking about was K-State this, K-State that. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. And remember, I'm a mid-American guy, right? Conference yeah. guy. I was like, man, that's great. I said, when I was at Eastern, we used to beat up on Kent State all the time. And he's like, Kent State? What do you mean Kent State? Man, I'm talking about Kansas State. What are you talking about? So I was like, man, I don't know anybody who ever went to Kansas State. But either way, man, it's all good, man. And, of course, he always shared those stories about how talented they were back at K-State, man. But it's all in love, man. I appreciate my boy Barrett. Hey, Charlie, hey, Charlie, I have to ask you. As you got to know him, did he backdoor you in terms of – getting to your family say i've tried to do my best to shield my family away from him because he's like eddie haskell man he gets behind close, and now he's got my, he my family it, loves him more than they love me did, did Bro, he do that to you about? did he backdoor you like that too his brother hey. you can hang with his brother his brother's his fishing but he's my fishing buddy his brother fishes more than i do he fishes more than you do what Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, they get it, man. My brother loves fishing, man. He's one of those guys that will be out there. It was funny because early on before, his, you know, it, it was his girlfriend before it was his wife. And she used to, like, come up to me. She'd be like, man, he, you know, it's kind of hard for me to believe, but he kind of leaves, you know, at 8 o'clock at night and doesn't come back until 5 in the morning, but he claims he's fishing. And I said, all I'm going to tell you, if you want this relationship to work, do not get in between him and his fishing. Wow. Because he is a guy that will start. And will now go from, you know, Pittsburgh, drive two hours to Erie because they weren't hitting like he would like them to hit. And I'm like, dude, you do realize it is in the middle of winter and he'll go from fishing that way to ice fishing. That's like that's how serious my brother is. with fishing. <sighs> yep. Yep. Oh man, he, he's yeah. got to hang out with these two guys, man. That, that oh, is that's yeah. impressive. I, see, I'm from Wisconsin, so I know exactly what you're talking about, man. I grew up fishing. I still, as you can see behind me, I still fish a lot today. Um, and, and I was in, I lived in uh, Pittsburgh for 10 years. I worked for WPXI there for 10 years. Okay. And I see, I see you work with my boy, Bob Pompiani there now. Oh yeah. I'm down with Pomp. Yeah. I've known him, oh, you know, over 20 years, but now yeah. officially in that role has been now 10 years working with him, man. He's been, he's one of the best in the business. He's been doing it for over 40 years yep. and, you know, to work with him and the insight that he has, he teases it up for me, man. He makes me look a lot better than probably what I'm worthy of looking uh, good at it <laughs> over the years so i appreciate bob i appreciate his family and everybody everything that he's done for the city of pittsburgh mm. wow that's good well, stuff. Hey, well let me let me tell you about charlie charlie's the quarterback whisperer a lot of times you see um how good good ben roethlisberger was a lot of that time it was charlie from behind the scenes getting them pointed in the right direction man you know so just talk about now man what are they doing at the quarterback position today what, what's going on with them yeah, and I mean, it's, it's funny because I've, I've worked with Ben nine of my 11 years in Pittsburgh, and it was funny because we actually on Sunday was doing a podcast together, and we relived some of those stories over, the, you know, behind the scenes that not many people have become aware of, but now it's starting to surface a little bit now that we're both retired. But what's going on in this quarterback room, man, is just something that really I, I was uh, I shared my concern when the initial move was made from Mitch Trubisky to Kenny Pickett, and people were looking at me like I was crazy, and they're like, what do you mean? You know, Kenny, he provided a spark in the – 
in the Jets game. And I'm like, well, you also got to remember the quarterback position is a delicate position. Mm -hmm. All of those guys have to work together. You don't have anybody that's looking over their shoulder. Any information that's being shared amongst one another all has to be done in good faith. So nobody's looking over their shoulder from that particular perspective. But lo and behold, when the move was made to go to the rookie, what you're telling everybody when you make a quarterback change, that he is the reason why we're not winning. And when you do that, and now all of a sudden you get what they say, they get the big break, breaks, break off, beat off of him, Buffalo. Um, no, uh, Mike Tomlin, you see, they got, we got our heads smashed in. And when you go from that manner and then ultimately now lose, um, you know, in the manner that they've been doing, it's very tough to take. But now all of a sudden when Mitch Trubisky had to re-enter into the game, he remembers all of those comments that were being made by these other guys to say, we now have the, the leader that we've been hoping for in our huddle. And now here I am listening to that, having to enter in a huddle like Mr. Trubisky. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that is delicate situation. People thought that he should have started last week against Miami only because of the concussion protocols. The average has been one game missed. And then they lay an egg essentially down in Miami and it's, it's you know, it's just treading lightly at this point. And it doesn't look like it's getting easier as they now approach this Eagles game. And I say all of that to say, I love Kenny Pickett. I hope right. that he does have a great career. I just thought it was a premature move mm-hmm. by Mike Tomlin to make it as soon as he did, especially knowing that he made it at halftime without a rookie quarterback ever getting, get those starter reps mm-hmm. in anticipation that he just threw him in there. I'm like, there was no plan when that happened. That was a knee jerk decision. And then mm-hmm. we ultimately heard that there was a little bit of rift between Deontay Johnson and Mitchell Trubisky in the locker room, which led to Kenny Pickett being inserted into the lineup. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Dak. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask, you know, uh, yeah, I, 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 the quarterback position, you know, is, is, you know, up and down right now. But I, I think it's a lot to do with the um, offensive line just not being good at anything. You know, we could always hang our hat when we were there on the offensive line. We, we, we go out there and we can start punishing people. And push came to show we could pass block. They don't pass block well. They don't run block well. What is going on with the recruiting and what, what's going on with them um, implementing, you know, real starters into the offensive line? Well, you know, with, with your, your years when you were here as well, man, those those backups, man, you watch those backups prepare. You're like, man, I got to get on my stuff. I think we have people right. who are capable of taking our job. Right now, That that's not there. You don't have eight, nine, ten offensive linemen that you really can just insert into the lineup. Think about the interest of, of, of entering into training camp this year. You had Kendrick, uh, Kevin Dotson, and you had Kendrick Green. Those two were battling at the left guard position. Now, Kendrick Green was the starting center, and he started all games last year. So you go from now competing for a starting job at the left tackle, you, I mean left guard, you lose that, and all of a sudden you're not even worthy of a hat this year? He has not been active at all in the first six games. Wow. That lets you know, okay, something else is brewing so the development of these younger players are not happening, which ultimately are resulting here. And when you try to improve that running game, something that Art Rooney, Steelers owner, has emphasized over the last few years, and you have not gotten better, especially when you now have a first-round draft pick with Najee Harris in that backfield, and it's not going. So that now eliminates the play-action game. It's almost comical when they go back and do a play-action at all linebackers and say, we know you're not running. We're just now going to go back and defend the pass. And it makes it very difficult. So right now they do not have that element in this offense. And we've seen 20 now, 28 games of Matt Canada at this particular point, and everything has been consistent. So regardless of who your quarterback is, you still have the same play caller. So you're not going to see these glaring results that everybody's hoping for when you have a change of quarterback. Hey, Charlie, um, this Steelers organization is very prideful when it comes to defensive prowess. And I look at this particular group of defensive players, and you have you have the names. You have Hayward. You have Devin Bush. You have Fitzpatrick, Witherspoon. Why has this defense bottomed out the way it has this year? Yeah, one of the, pl- the positives on the defensive side of the ball is Miles Jack. This guy's playing lights out. He's leading the team in tackles, and he's showing up every single play, which really has elevated Devin Bush because now he has somebody that he knows that can help line him up. And we're hoping that now Devin Bush can kind of flourish in the manner that everybody hoped he would as a first round pick four years ago. Mm. The the biggest loss for here is TJ Watt. Mm. And it's hard to say, you always say, well, one player doesn't make a difference. It does because TJ demands that double team. In turn, someone on the other side is always now going to be one-on-one. And you can see Alex Alex Highsmith, who is benefiting from that. And at one point he was leading the league in in sacks. Mm. But now what can everybody else do? Because now you lose TJ Watt. Cam Hayward is commanding the double team. And now you're going to shift those chips to Alex Smith's side versus TJ's side. So they need somebody 
that's going to evolve in that rush game from the outside. And that's been the challenge that this team has had. Mm, man, you look at it. They, they're, they're one and nine, one and nine without TJ Watt being on the field. But I mean, when you look at the team as a whole, man, there are so many guys that could be productive. Mika Fitzpatrick, you know, I mean, yeah, the other safety, you know, uh, Ed, what's his Edmonds, name? Um, Ed, yep. yep, he's good. Um, look, off the side of the ball, the three receivers are, are, are you know, they'll be mm-hmm. starters on any team in the NFL. I just don't understand. Well, I do understand because the trenches aren't taken care of. You know what I mean? The trenches well, just aren't. Here's the, here's, here's the one thing that I will say, and you all are on the outside versus me on the inside. Right. The thing is here, we've been over 27 games that we've had with the Steelers team, with Matt Canada, our offensive coordinator. We've seen four quarterbacks run his system. Ben Roethlisberger, a Hall of Famer. You have Mason Rudolph, who led a 16-16 tie against Detroit. We got it. We had a chance to see him for five quarters. They told Mason that you're not even worthy enough to be the starter. But even though they sold it, that he was going to be he was going to be in a competition. So they signed Mitch Trubisky. He's thinking, okay, I'm going to be the backup. Then you draft first round Kenny Pickett. Okay, fine. There's nothing you could do about it. But in turn, the Steelers drafted a quarterback in the seventh round of this year's draft. So they told him you're not even one of the three quarterbacks being worthy to start now for this team. So he's in an awkward situation. But I say all of this to say to say we've seen Ben, we've seen Mason, Mitch for a few games, and now Kenny Pickett. This team has is now averaging in that 27-game span 14 points a game. That is unacceptable <laughs> when you look at where this offense is at and when you hear the comments that are coming out of the Steelers' locker room today from offensive coordinator Matt Canada. He says, we're close. We just haven't <laughs> exploded yet. And that's the reaction that Steelers Nation is getting by when he makes that comment to say, we're close. A- so any chance – uh, 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 No, sorry, Barry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go I was going to say, we had, we had Jerry Dulock on a little bit earlier, and he said that Tomlin yeah. is absolutely safe, but is, is Canada in some trouble in your estimation, Charlie? Yeah, if it continues to pan out in this manner, yeah, absolutely. What Now, if for whatever reason they go and do the same thing they did against Buffalo and go lay an A, then, yeah, there's going to be some current uh, some concern because the Steelers now enter into a bye week. They'll have two weeks before they get ready for the Saints. That's going to be something that those rumblings are going to get louder and louder. So it's important for Matt to figure out a way to score some points and hopefully defeat the Eagles this Sunday. If they don't, you better believe rumblings are going to happen. But my my history and being around the Steelers organization, which I've been around now for 20 years, the one thing that I do not see Art Rooney, Steelers owner, doing is firing someone midseason mm-hmm. and allowing them to sit home and collect mm-hmm. a check. That's not going to happen. <laughs> so gotcha. I fully expect Matt Canada to now ride it out the rest of the year, and he's going to say, here's the reason why that we're not getting better, especially when you say your first-round draft pick, Kenny Pickett, will do better at running this offense than a – Hall of Famer with Ben Roethlisberger, and yet we're not seeing the results. Charlie, Charlie, what is what is Mike Tomlin's body language been like through all this? Well, he's been right. He's, he remained, uh, you know, even keel, and he's always trying to remain the same and saying, "Hey, our goal is to win the division, make the playoffs, and all of those things." But yet, everybody else, especially on the outside, is now saying, "Well, this is rebuilding." Well, I'm not going to mm-hmm. say rebuilding until the team acknowledge the fact that this is a rebuilding year. They're selling and they sold us on the fact coming into here they can compete for the division mm-hmm. and possibly compete for the Super Bowl. That's the narrative that you wanted me to believe, and that's the expectations that I'm going to hold you to until you tell me otherwise. Mm. Do you see an inter- interim coach that could probably take over if he did leave? I mean, well, what, if, what would you well think about this, B. If you are, even if you do, and let's just say Mike Sullivan, who is the quarterback coach at this point, could be possible, acceler- uh, you know, accelerated to um, or promoted to the offensive coordinator. If I'm Mike Sullivan, I'm saying you need to pay me offensive coordinator money. So not only do you have coordinating that you're getting paid for someone to sit at home with Matt Canada, Mike Sullivan is going to want to pay raise. Whoever you now elevate into the quarterback position will go from g- grad assistant to now full-time quarterback coach, I want to pay raise. So this is a trickle-down effect from the owner perspective. Now, if somebody wants to do it just off the pure love, to say, hey, I can now prove my value and I'll work at the same salary, but more uh, role, roles and responsibilities, kudos to them. But I just know how this pecking order goes. And when you fire somebody and somebody gets elevated, there's always money that, that needs to be exchanged. Charlie, what, what are your thoughts just to jump over to the team the Steelers are playing uh, on Jalen Hurts? I'm curious. You know, we, we've seen the growth, the development uh, this year over the last couple of years. But, you know, we're in the eye of the storm. What, what are your what's your assessment in looking at it from a distance? 
Yeah, I really like what I've seen with him. And this was this stated back last year when the Steelers came up and played the Eagles during preseason. I'm like, wow, this guy can play. Why are they giving, being so critical of him? Mm-hmm. You know, I really thought he was going through his reads. He got rid of the football and he was delivery accurate. So I was just baffled at the fact of what the noise that was coming out of it. So it's really hard to give a fair assessment only because the Steelers don't play them and I don't focus on them every single week. It's typically every four years, but I had the chance to see him last year, and now I had a chance to see him this year. I love the confidence that he brings to the table. I love the energy that the players are feeding off of him, and they accept him as that leader. And when you have those particular combinations that are happening and he's delivering and producing wins on the field, man, they truly believe in this guy. I'm a big fan of his, man, and I'm rooting for him. Charlie, when you play, you were viewed as this so-called hybrid quarterback, so to speak. And that that was a novelty then, but it's a norm across the league right now. When you look at the Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, where plays are being deliberately designed for quarterbacks to run the ball now more so than ever before. Your thoughts on the way that the quarterback position has evolved compared to when you played? Man, first of all, the rules have changed. Because when I was playing, I mean, you could hit the quarterback, throw him to the ground, somebody <laughs> yep. up and down on top yep. of him. It didn't matter. There was no rough in the pot. I mean, it had to be something egregious for you to get a penalty on a, on a quarterback hit. So now when you get to this point, the rules now are in favor of the quarterback because they realize it puts defenders in an awkward situation. Yes. Because I'm a run, but yet the moment you get ready to hit me, I start my slide. And then all of a sudden, you hit me in the wrong place because I now slide under you. You hit my head. Guess what? That's a personal foul. Yeah. That is completely – it's hard for the referees to do that. But as the quarterbacks know that, as you're running up to the defender, you're like, man, I don't even know how to hit you. I I really don't, especially now that the defense alignment are getting penalties just for tackling a quarterback. It used to be throwing your weight on the quarterback. When we look back, I think it was Grady Jackson in uh, yep. Atlanta for, yep. for t- against Brady. Exactly. What is he, su- what is he supposed to do? That was ridiculous. Do? Exactly. Yeah, ridiculous. What is he supposed to so now quarterbacks to your point when you're now mobile and you can get out of that pocket. I can get as much yardage as possible because I know you're not going to hit me. And then all of a sudden it, if I now die forward for a first down and the defender doesn't hit me, he's getting yelled at by his coach. I feel very bad about the defenders right now having to defend quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny when it happened, man. We're playing in Detroit. <laughs> We're playing Tampa Bay. And I was playing, I was blocking this guy, uh, Chi Ahana, too. Well, at the time, my guard, Tony Simple, got beat. And when he beat him, you know, Charlie expected me to block my man forever. And then he ends up getting sacked by Cheedy instead of getting sacked by Sap, who, who beat the guard. Mm-hmm. So he don't look up at me. I'm trying to help him up. First of all, he pulls his hand back from me, looks up and he said, hey, man, you going to come to work today? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, wait a minute. It wasn't, on my, it wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. You come to work today? I said, no, that's Sap. You want me to block Sap too? Yeah. Yeah, I want you to do that too. <laughs> Why hey man, I was, I was, I was, I was, hand, come on, man. I was being selfish, man. You, 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 you would give me two seconds of time. I just wanted three when you're blocking the Hall of Famer. That's all I want. I don't feel that being cruel. <laughs> he stayed on me, that, man. That's, <laughs> that's, that's that's wishful thinking, but hey, man, it, it's all good, man. I appreciate it. You made me look a lot better than more than I had. I made you look better. I promise uh-huh. you that. All right, I, I got to ask you this, Charlie, to get away from the X's and O's. I've been waiting to ask you this. Um, when you played with Barrett, did yeah. he have an obsession? with White Castle burgers the way he does today? (laughs) Well, it's hard for me to say that only because I don't eat White Castle. I tried it the first time. I tried it the first time when I came from Pittsburgh to Eastern Michigan and all my roommates, you know, they they grew up on that. They're like, oh, this is great. We're going to go get the 10 burgers. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay. So we go through and literally, you know, you got to take that. Well, you're in the car on your way back to the door. You still got to take that quick bite, right? So I took a quick bite. I like, um, Thank yeah, you. Y'all can, yeah, y'all can have these. Thank you. you. Stop, <laughs> Thank you. Stop over here somewhere else and get it. It just that wasn't for me, and I'm not knocking it. It just wasn't for me. Now my wife, she loves it. She grew up on it, so she wants to stop. So they don't have it in Pittsburgh. But if we're in Ohio somewhere or at least passing through, we have to stop to get it for her. I just choose not to order because that's not my preference. There you go. Anyway, See that, See, yeah. Charlie? I've, I've seen this man eat a box of eight like it was Oreo cookies. <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, it, and, and, I'm, and I'm sitting there going like this. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think Charlie's in agreement with you. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, listen, Charlie, it was great catching up with you, man. Uh, appreciate your information, your knowledge, and uh, keep up the great work on your uh, on, on the second chapter here. You're doing an awesome job. Great oh, I job, appreciate man. that. Thank, yeah, thank you for having great. me. Of course, of course, anytime, man, I, I love to join the show. I know every four years or so we try to get on, but, man, I love to come on as a regular. 
Please keep me in mind. Hey, hey Charlie, before you go, I got to ask you this because I was watching our chat room here. Has anybody ever told you you look like John Legend? <laughs> oh, big time. People say that, but I don't see it. And, you know, there was a time that he – there was, a, there was a time that he came to Pittsburgh because he was doing a concert. He came up. I was like, man, people say I look like you. We took a picture. I, I just didn't see it. But over the years, the more I grew my hair, people yeah. were just like, this is crazy. The only reason why I grew it was because of COVID and everybody was sitting in, in the house. I couldn't go to the barbershop. So that's how I got it elevated. So my wife's like, she's like, no, keep this. You know, go ahead and grow it. So I say all of that to say last year, I'm sorry, right before the pandemic, 2020, we're right around that time. And of course, news stories are kind of to slow down. Well, I ended up, I, I love, I have an infatuation with my snowblower because I bought, my wife bought me this big snowblower and I can't use it when it's only like one or two inches. So I look forward to these big snowstorms. Yeah. So I took my camera, literally it's about a seven second can, uh, video and I just in my yard, I'm like, wow, this is awesome. I get a chance to use my snowblower. And then all of a sudden, I, as I posted it on Twitter, now people are retweeting and they start adding at John Legend. <laughs> so now... All of a sudden, no, all of a sudden now, John now re he quote tweets my oh. my uh, post and he says, man, screaming through my mentions, I thought this was me. So now, okay, go, and it was now, this is my first viral tweet, right? Now it's viewed over, <laughs> over 7 million times because he, he retweeted me. Oh my it, now, it now turned into a news story in Pittsburgh as slow, snow, a slow news day, John Legend, <laughs> Confuses himself as Charlie. Oh my and God! People are writing a story oh about this, and it just took a mind of its own. I'll send it. To, I'll send it to Bear so you all can look at it. You'll uh, see for sure, it. yeah, it's crazy. crazy. We'll get it all, so y'all can see. Yeah, you'll see it. You can and I'm just like, wow. So of course, at that point, you know, I invited him to the to the Steelers game, and he's a huge Bengals fan. So I'm trying to get him in here for that Sunday night game that they play in Pittsburgh here. But I'm not sure of his schedule. But at least I, I sent the invitation out. So if John, you're listening. Look forward to see you in Pittsburgh Good. soon. Charlie, we'll have, John, we'll have John on the show, too. I, I, yeah. I hate to say this, Charlie, but the more people mentioned it in the chat room and the more you tell that story, I'm sitting there going, he does look like yeah, John Legend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, John himself got confused. I mean, what, what are we going to do? I mean, it's, obviously, it's real. Hey, oh, when my you, God. When, you, when, I send, when I send this to Barry, y'all going to laugh y'all tails right. off. Or y'all right. dude really tweet, tweeted out saying he confused himself for Charlie. That's, That's crazy. Wow. That's awesome. Charlie, <laughs> listen, man. It was really fun having you. We will definitely have you on very soon. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes. Appreciate first. you, bro. Yeah, hey, I appreciate, appreciate it. you, bro. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Yeah, man. You got it. Yeah, Charlie, that's funny. You're right. Yeah, it was, wow. it was like when he grew the hair out because he used yes. to always have the shaved head. Yep. Yes. He always, yep. always, always had it had it real short, and he and he grew it out. He does look like John Legend. That's I, I'm look, when you first brought him on, I'm looking at, at people in the chat room. They say, hey, man, that's John Legend. I'm like, no, man, ain't no John Legend. <laughs> but then I'm looking. More people start saying, I'm like, yeah. You know what? Yeah. They have a point here. Mm -hmm. This dude looks like John Legend. Yep. No, look, Jeremiah so I had Butler. to ask him before he got off. I had to ask him. But look at Jeremiah Butler. What? They're just ordinary people. Uh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to get real cute at the end and say, you know, all of us loves all of you, but it was getting a little weird. I, so I didn't do that. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. But, you know, I, I thought Something wrong with you guys, man. But how do I work yeah. with you guys? But I can't oh work with God. you guys. You know why? Because you're just as mentally challenged as we are. That's why you can work if with not us. not more. Yes. Oh, my God. I put, I'd, say, I'd say if I, if, I chron if I chronicled who needs the most mental help, it would be Baird 1. I would be close second, and I would say over the last two months in particular, my, my Rob is now closing the gap. Yeah, Rob has closed the gap. He said, who is this guy that's on the show with you guys now? That's not the same Robert that we had, we had three months ago. <laughs> it's not the same Robert. I said, you're uh, right, man. No, I'm telling you. it's, it's uh, uh, I'm, I'm, Usually you want to uh, climb a ladder and ascend in a good way when you're, when you're like wackiness is climbing, yeah. your mental health, <laughs> everything's being questioned. Yes. Oh, my God. That's hey bro, crazy. you know, but he he, <clears throat> he um thank you. Dude, thank he you. was a great thank guy, you, man. He, yeah. he he's always been great, bro. He uh he was the first guy, like nobody, you know, it was a time that nobody really thought about having a Porsche, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, back in the day, he was the first guy I ever seen drive a Porsche, you know what I'm saying, in the NFL that really, you know, drove Porsches, you know what I'm saying? He had a Porsche, man. I was like, you know, you big time when you you're an innovator, you're driving Porsches, man. He had a Porsche 911. We used to um we had camp in Saginaw, Michigan, the Saginaw State. Mm -hmm. And when we have day off, we used to go back to um back to to uh, Detroit. Yeah. And it was like an hour and thirty minutes away. Well, at the time, he had a Porsche, and then a couple other guys had like Ferrari, Lamborghinis. Well, 
they were racing, racing back to Detroit and upwards of speeds of like 160. 160. They were going so fast that police cars would turn their lights on, but then they turn them right back off and didn't even pull out. That's how oh, fast wow. they were going. You know, Herman Moore had a had a had a Lamborghini, um, the you know, what was it um uh, Diablo? Unbelievable. Jeez. Just to get an oil change was eight was uh was I think he said it was like forty eight hundred bucks to get an oil change. Yes, what <laughs> get an oil change? What? Yes, oh my! An God. oil change was forty eight hundred bucks. I live in a different world, no, man. No, man. No, wow. if I okay. pay more than seventy bucks for an oil change, man, I'm, that ruins my whole day. Yeah, well, I can't get I can't get oil change for seventy bucks. I got older cars, so I got to get oh. the. Oh yeah, you know what I'm yeah. So it's like ninety five bucks. Yeah, it's like yeah. ninety five bucks. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's wild, man. That yeah. that is pretty crazy. All right, uh, all right. So what we'll do here is Something guys. Wrong with YouTube, man. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, we know um, that. Uh, we're gonna take a timeout. We'll come back. Uh, we will. We still have a lot of NFL stuff to get to, which we'll get to in the last segment or out of Todd. But we'll come back. We have Todd Callis is going to join us, uh, who is the Astros radio or TV, excuse me, TV uh, play by play man. So we'll talk to him. When we get back. All right. Barrett Brooks, Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis. We are uh, Sports Tech, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about Station Tap. Yes, yeah, Station Tap. I will tell you what. If you want to you want to spend the day in a fun way coming up this weekend, and we're talking about on, uh, on Saturday. It, it is just an unbelievable event that they're having called the Fall Fest. So what does that entail? What is involved? in the fall fest well how about round tower one of the best bands in the area if you if you like you know live bands local that just crush they're amazing they have a food court there's going to be a food truck there they have all kinds of ipas just magical stuff and you can bring the kids because they're going to have a little costume parade all right on top of it so you have all of those things all rolled into one for the fall fest at station tap which is on fern boulevard in Drexel Hill. So you got to stop on out. It's going to be awesome. Fall Fest this Saturday coming up 12 to 6, October 29th with Round Tower, Beer Garden, Kids Costume Parade, food vendors, craft vendors, outdoor seating. It's going to be a really nice day. What a perfect fall day for you. A couple days before Halloween. Let mom and dad have a little fun as well. So go to Station Tap uh, Catering and Station Tap on Fleur Boulevard in Drexel Hill. Go to get your